Welcome to Kids Church Online, Mommy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday here with us on Kids Church Online. We hope that you've had a lovely week and really had a chance to enjoy the sunshine. I'm sure some of you are getting ready to go back to school, and we hope that all the preparation is going really well. We've got a lot happening this morning. We've got Megan and Rebecca who are going to be finishing up the story of Moses. I can't believe we've got through the entire thing. We hope you've really enjoyed it. And then we've got a prayer slot with Rebecca who's going to be telling us a little bit more, giving us another idea of how we can speak to God. Before we do any of that, let's say a quick prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you for the story of Moses and for how much it reminds us that you are in control. Look after us as we watch this video and help us to have a really special day with our families. We ask this in your beautiful name. Amen. Okay, everybody. Bye. Bye. that swim and all the birds that fly were made from your incredible imagination creator god we're singing to the creator god of all the world creator god we celebrate you we celebrate you you spread the ripples through the sea that grows and all the leaves that fall everyone and welcome back to another week of our story time on Kids Church Online. 
I hope that you have been enjoying all the lovely weather and getting outside to play because I know over the summer it hasn't been the best all the time. So I hope you're enjoying that sunshine and the last week before maybe we start getting back into school and thinking about school. It is crazy that the summer has gone so quickly, but I'm sure you're all so excited to be going back to school again. Now, our story this morning is going to continue to be looking at Moses and it is in fact our last one in the series. We have been looking at Moses' life from his childhood and right the way through and all the adventures that he has been on with the Israelites, God's chosen people. And through it all, Moses has showed us his wonderful faith and that he has always trusted in God, even when times have been tough. And today is no different. Even though the Israelites start giving Moses a pretty hard time and they maybe shout at him, they maybe say things that aren't very nice to him, but he still points them in the direction of trusting and believing in God. And God rewards him for that, which is incredible. So I hope you enjoy our story. I'll not give away any more spoilers. So sit down and get ready to watch our little video all about Moses' final adventure. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt ah. to live with the Midianites. Ah. But God called Moses back to Egypt. Ah to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. Uh. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. The people were still thirsty, and they were mad at Moses, saying, Did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. and Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. 
Well, I hope that you enjoyed our story this morning and hearing our last little bit about Moses' life. Our story was really great at reminding us from the weeks before that we had learnt and how we'd left off at the parting of the Red Sea. So the Israelites had left Egypt and had entered into the wilderness and were on their way to the promised land, the special land promised to God's special people, the Israelites. But the journey was long, like we're talking really long, not just a wee short trip in the car. They didn't have cars, they were all on their feet walking day after day and the Israelites were tired. They were hungry and they were thirsty and that made them a little bit grumpy. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but whenever I'm hungry, I always get a little bit grouchy when your belly starts to rumble and you're feeling tired and that's exactly how they felt. And they started complaining to Moses and saying that God wasn't looking after them. But Moses reminded them that God is good and he is faithful and he prayed to God to help them and God provide. And that is our first lesson from the story that God will provide for us. In our times of trouble or in our times of sadness or need, God is there. We just need to pray to him and trust that he is listening. Now, we might think that we have a certain plan or a certain thing that we need to fix whatever is going on with us, but God always knows best. And just because it doesn't work out the way that we have maybe planned to start with, doesn't mean that God hasn't answered our prayer. It doesn't mean that he is not drawing close to us and helping us. In fact, he is just helping us in a different way. And it'll maybe take a little bit of time for us to actually see what God was doing all this time. And that's why it is very important to have patience. Now patience is a very big word and is difficult sometimes to always do but is very important in our relationship with God. We need to have patience and trust in him that he is always working for our good. And last, the last little lesson that we can take and draw out of our story is at the very end we hear a little bit about the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments were given to Moses on Mount Sinai as sort of rules, shall we say, on how to live our life. Now, whenever most people hear rules, they kind of think, oh, not this again, things I can't do. But in fact, the rules that God gave are the best way for us to live our life. They're the way that we will be happiest and the way that our life will be the best that it can. So that is why it is so, so important to keep these rules. And Rebecca is now going to teach us a little bit more about these rules and what they mean in our lives. And hopefully you will get to play a little game with your families too. So I hope you've enjoyed our summer programmes on Kids Church Online and I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you all again soon. So hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed listening to our story today. Today we were listening to the final chapter in Moses' life. So we learned about how God sent down a list of 10 rules for us to follow here on earth so that we could honour him. This list was called the Ten Commandments. It's important for us to try and remember these. So I'm going to teach you a little song because I think that's the easiest way to remember them. Here goes.
one, we're not going to look at the first five commandments. Okay, so number one is to not worship any other God but the one true God that we worship every Sunday. Number two is not to worship any idols. So this may be statues or figures, but in our lives today, it could just be putting things in front of God. So it's important for us to focus on him as much as possible. Number three, so that's to not use the Lord's name in vain. So this means not to use any words or sayings that we know God might not like us to say or might be offensive to him. Number four is to keep the Sabbath holy. So that means to keep a Sunday focused on God and for us to rest and enjoy his presence. And number five is to honour our mum and dad. So basically just to do what we're told and to respect our parents and our grandparents. So we're now going to look at the next five commandments. So number six, do not commit murder. So we all know that to murder somebody is wrong. Number seven, is do not commit adultery. So this is basically a big word which means that a mum and a dad, whenever they get married, should be loyal and trust each other for the rest of their lives. Number eight is do not steal. Again, we know that it's not right to take something that is not our own. Number nine is to not tell lies. So no matter how big or how small, any little lie is not right and that God would not be happy if we were to do that. And finally, number 10 is do not covet. So again, a word that we maybe haven't heard before, but it simply means don't be jealous. So that means be happy if other people have things and be happy if we with what we have and not want what other people have. So hopefully running through them 10 commandments, that's them explained a little bit and you'll be able to learn from that. So now a little challenge for you and your family. We're gonna play a little game. So each round, you're gonna pick one person to try and act out one of the 10 commandments. You're not allowed to speak. You can only use your hands, your legs, and your body to try and act out one of the 10 commandments that we have just described. Get the rest of your family to try and guess what uh, 10 commandments you're describing and if they're able to guess it you get one point now give it a go and you can maybe try and take some photos or videos and let us know how you get on so one important thing to remember before we go today is that everybody in the world because there is sin in the world has broken one of the ten commandments at one point in their lives but the amazing thing to remember is that because jesus came to earth and died on the cross all of our sins are forgiven if we go to god and ask him to forgive us and say sorry for the mistakes that we make and that's um, important to remember whenever we are learning about the ten commandments Good morning. This morning we are going to try a little bit of popcorn prayer. Now, I don't know if you know what popcorn prayer is, but when you make popcorn, all of the little pieces pop at different times. And that's kind of the idea behind popcorn prayer. Um, we are going to just spend some time in God's presence. And when we're in his presence, we are just going to say little tiny prayers um, just as they come to our mind. So we're just going to sit and we're going to enjoy the presence of God. Um, and if you have a little prayer, it doesn't have to be super long. It can just be like a little quick prayer, like, God, thank you for the sunshine today. Or thank you for the food that I have eaten for breakfast. Or um, God, please help me with whatever it is that you need help with this week. Just little short prayers, like little pops of popcorn. And um, so, yeah, you don't have to say anything. God can understand what your thoughts are. Or if you want to say a couple of little popcorn prayers, we're going to take some time to do that now.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul Still my soul will sing your praise unending.